Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop. This is Freddy here with this week's Retro RPG. And this week I would like to present this. Warren 40,000 Rogue Trader. Now, this is the 1987 first release of Warhammer 40,000, the war game. And I'm perfectly aware that's not an RPG, but we will come to that. Now, this was the very first game I bought um, at age 16. I walked into a game store looking to buy something um, with my saved up pennies in my pocket. And this was what I walked out with. Not a role-playing game as I'd intended, but actually a war game. It had just come out about a week or so previously, and everybody was talking about it, everybody was buying it, so I grabbed myself a copy. Now, this isn't my original copy. This is another one I've bought in the years since, because I really wanted it back. Um, the story is I lent it to a friend of mine, and they moved away. Um, they've become quite successful and they moved away to London and then Japan and then Canada and now they're in Sweden and they've got a nice house in Sweden and they're unpacking all their boxes and they were putting photographs up on Facebook and I spotted my original copy of 40k which is in very safe hands and being looked after far better than I can so long may it last there but anyway why on 40,000? In the nightmare future of the 40th millennia, only the superior psychic mind of the Emperor shields humanity from certain extinction. Dedicated to his service are the warriors, agents, and myriad servants of the Imperium. Foremost amongst them stand the Space Marines, men strengthened by advanced bioprocessing techniques to create the ultimate human warrior. The galaxy is a hostile place. There are alien forces, even unwitting humans, that could enslave or destroy mankind if they could. The struggle continues unabated. Wars rage over airless planets, in the city bottoms of hive worlds, and within the Imperium itself. From the dark regions of the warp space, chaotic entities spin webs to ensnare the weak and beguile the innocent. Everywhere, soulless spectres and slavering monsters are poised to extinguish the life of humanity. This is no time for peace, no respite, no forgiveness, there is only war. And it's a tabletop game designed for two or more players. Again, we will come back to that. Let's have a look in the book anyway. So, we have absolutely gorgeous artwork in this. It is just beautifully, beautifully presented. Um, Games Workshop at the time had some of the best artists in the trade. It's just absolutely gorgeous throughout. Obviously, it was a war game, so there's lots of beautifully painted miniatures. their are prototypes and all that of what 40k would become. So in this book, you can see lots of things which no longer exist in 40k. We've got the Zotes, we've got Squats, we've got uh, Slan. Lots of stuff out of the Warhammer Fantasy roleplay. Basically, the 40k universe is just fantasy in space. So we've got humans, you've got space elves, space dwarves, space halflings, space orcs. Um... And lots of other things. Um, from the Warhammer universe, you've got the Slan. Um, we've got lots of rules here. Um, if we come to the stats in a second, you will start to see where this is not really a basic um, war game. There's more to it. There's the profile. I had to go back. I apologize. So we have movement allowance. Weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds, initiative, attacks. So these are all fairly standard. These are what you would expect from a war game. How far are you going to move? How good are, is your miniature at shooting? How many times do they get to shoot? Leadership, okay. Intelligence, cool, and willpower. Now, why do you need to know how smart... Someone is, these are more role-playing characteristics. And really, 40k is a weird hybrid. Um, we'll keep on going through. Um, so, we've got various monsters in here. Again, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Some of the elves there. 
savages. Just an universe of different things. So you can go from your marines fighting um, space orcs to fighting elves to fighting more primitive traditional style elves riding dinosaurs to fighting cavemen. You know, there's a lot in here. Um, psychic powers. We've got the mutations. I always loved the mutations in the Games Workshop stuff of the era. So, um, arms elongate at will. Creature has a complex system of ligaments and muscle instead of normal arm bones. This peculiar arrangement permits the individual to elongate the arms a distance to make a single close combat attack. Atrophied arms, breathes fire, brightly patterned skin, long legs, long nose, hopper, headless, hideous appearance, pinhead. There's lots of beautifully drawn out and beautifully descriptive mutations. Battle at the farm, an introductory battle. And then we're on to our equipment. And again, beautifully, beautifully presented. Everything's drawn out in this um, diagram format, almost like blueprints over the back. So from compound bows there, the bolters, uh, graviton guns, melter guns, muskets, plasma guns, pistols, slings. We've got a huge variety of different weapons here. Um, power glove, up to distortion cannons, rocket launchers, heavy plasma guns, heavy stub gun, which always makes me think of the um, heavy re or, uh, light repeating blaster out of Star Wars that the snowtroopers carry. Well, so we've got grenades, all the stuff you'd expect from a war game, but also why do you need muskets and things in a war game. When are you really going to put up Stone Age savages and medieval characters against people in powered armour? Got flyers here. Lots of ideas which really didn't come. Cars. Why do you have cars in a war game? This really is all fleshing the universe out. Walkers. I used to have that diagram on a t-shirt. In fact, I still do. The t-shirt is very um, shredded. I got pushed through a plate glass door by my brother, and all the back of it got cut up. But I've kept that t-shirt because I love that diagram. That is a beautiful exploded diagram of a set of powered armor there, along with all the descriptions of how it works. Robots. Dreadnoughts. Bionics. This is all stuff which really isn't touched on in Warhammer 40k anymore, but we've got so much going on here. Loads of background. The Emperor himself in his golden throne. What a handsome fella. Um, a lot of the artwork was done before stuff was finalised. You've got lots of weird and wonderful versions of powered armour. Um, before they finally decided on the beaky design they used in Rogue Trader. A layout of the Fortress Monastery of the Space Wolves. So much of what the game has become was already set. They decided on. Now that bears no resemblance at all to the powered armor used now. Color schemes for painting up your miniatures. Assassins. And then we're on to abhumans. So we've got beastmen, halflings, ogrins, which are basically giants, squats. Yep, this copy is falling apart a bit here. Then the Eldar. So we've got dwarves. Oh, the, the squats are the dwarves. We've got giants. We've got halflings. We've got chaos beastmen. We've got space elves. This is just fantasy in space. And we carry on through. Gretchen's, the sl ancient slan in their inheritance, Jokero, 
who are hyper-intelligent apes who create special weapons. So you can get a ring with a bolt gun and a laser built into it, and they can uh, modify weapons. The Tyranids and their hive fleets. Zotes. And then we're on to Astral Hounds, Spectres, um, Enslavers, Vampires who appear as giant bats, Warp Entities, Zombies, Ambles, Protolids, Katachan Face Eater, um, something which looks like a flannel. I think that's the Katachan Face Eater because that's the Katachan Devil. Gene Stealers looking very different to how they look now. Dinosaurs, Rust Monster, the Pharaoh Beast, just a Dungeon Dragons Rust Monster. Uh, gyrants, which are, resemble a large cat. So why are any of these in a war game? When is a giant intelligent cat, which appears very thick and fluffy ginger and orange fur, going to be useful in a war game? It's not. But these are monsters which are useful if you're using this as a role-playing game. And that's where I think WoW 40,000 was going with Rogue Trader before they settled into using it as a war game. There's everything here. You could pretty much sit down and Dungeon Master or Games Master 40k. There's no character generation as such, but you can make that up. There's no hints on Games Mastering, but... I think the basics are here. You could definitely games master this game. Um, lots of cartoony style art of the world. Gang members. More rules on movement. Plot generator. With twists and turns. Again, beautiful artwork. Um, I believe there's even instructions in here for... Oh, I believe that's a self-portrait of the writers. A weird marine with a chainsaw arm. Use some technology, author's note on language. A sister of battle fighting a marine. The standard template constructs. So, I would consider this to be very nearly a role-playing game. Obviously, you couldn't create a character in any standard way. There's no experience. But there's rules enough, and there's ideas here, and there's monsters to fight. Um, it's very nearly there. I don't think there'd be much conversion necessary. And that's why I got so hooked into 40k. I've actually only fought two battles in my entire life. Um, one with this and one using a much later version. I think it was 3rd or 4th edition. I have no idea what they're up to. I just know it was a later version. Um, I played lots of the spin-offs. Space Hulk I played to death. Space Crusade I played up until recently with my kids. Um, I re remain very interested in the 40k universe. I've loved the computer games, but this is where my love for 40k started. Um, I started picking up White Dwarf, which had lots of other stuff in it at the time for the other role-playing games. As I said, a week after this, um, I walked back in and I picked up the Judge Dread role-playing game and just gathered more and more from there. And that's where my hobby began. And that's a beautiful old book. Um, Warhammer 40,000, 987 by Citadel Miniatures, it says on the cover, but it's Games Workshop. Thank you very, very much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe if you like at all what I'm doing. And you look after yourselves. I will catch you later. Bye.